Hello world, my name is Ben and today on the slowest house tour, we're in my front yard. Last year I hired a contractor to replace the 50s concrete sidewalk and slab steps with pavers. At his suggestion, we settled on a half moon style step, but he did a horrible job. So now I get to do it all over. Here's what the steps look like at the start, uh, as you can see. It's two steps and they're in a half moon pattern. Um, when he did it, it's uh, really geometrically not circular. Um, and there's massive gaps in the uh, lower parts of the steps. And this didn't survive the winter, as you can see. That kind of just falls over and is a minor death trap. Um, but so that's what I'm trying to fix. So this is the stone that was delivered. We've got the base stone that's used the lower part of the steps. And then we have the caps. And I have to take this and turn it into the circular steps. Today's the first day of the project, so I'm gonna work on stripping out what's here, and then we'll move on to actually restoring and putting in new steps. Apparently they did tack some of it together, because this is staying together nicely-ish. Alright, we'll come back once I've got more work done. So it turned out there was not only ants building nests in the steps, but we also got a nice little wasp nest. So now I have to get rid of them, so that way I don't get stung while trying to disassemble the rest. And hopefully, there isn't going to be another one. Alright, I got the top step removed, at least the cap on it. I apologize for the lawnmower in the background, but those are the steps with all the caps removed. I find it interesting that he didn't do it with one level on the bottom and then another level on the top. He actually interwove it so that way it's partially one level and then partially a second level. That's not how I plan on doing it. I just realized that when he did these, he didn't even take the time to cut off the little ends. As you can see, there's little ends on these. That if you cut them off, it makes them rounder. Instead, they left them whole, or whatever wasn't broken off, and uh, that left large gaps in between the stones rather than it being a nice, clean, circular pattern. Let's try not to do that. So I've removed the entire top step at this point, and you can see what's remaining of the lower step. Once you have full access to the space, double check measurements to verify that things will fit together the way you planned. It looks like the new stone should fit. Um, it might be tight if I go on top of the current walkway, um, but if I use it slightly recessed like they did, I shouldn't have any issues with height below the door. However, what that does mean is that I can't use their lower step stone at all. It's much, much taller than the stone that I have. So, we get to clear the rest of this out. I had visitors including this beetle, this centipede, this spider, another beetle, and this freaky red spider of death. So the steps are removed. Now I just have to do a little bit of cleanup. There we go. Everything's removed. All right. Now that everything's clear, it's time to get the lower step put in. Before I get into actually putting stone down and cutting it, I want to make sure that I'm cutting it right. So I'm going to recheck my measurements now that I don't have any of the old steps in the way and I'm going to redo the math. When I did my initial measurements, I assumed every brick was going to be the same size. When I went to the brickyard, I found that there was these smaller ones that would make a better circle. Unfortunately, what they actually deliver and produce appears to be a mixture. So we have these really long ones, we have some normal sized ones, we have some small ones, we have some larger with the corners. So it means I've got a lot more variation 
in uh, what I need to account for in my measurements. Seven inch. Looks like there's four different sizes. 80 inches across. I don't have a nice even radius and it's not actually a circle. So it's 166. I'm going to reserve my small one. Well, the, but I only have the yeah, which gives us a good okay. We're not going to be able to do that precisely. Oh, goodness gracious. By yeah, nine inches, that would be really convenient if yeah. the little knobs that stuck out were one inch. Time to swap to the masonry blade and start cutting stones. I had some trouble getting started with the first cut on the miter saw. But before long, I was set up and sawing away. After a while, I managed to cut off the wingtips from all of the new bricks. Starting with the clean foundation, I laid out the bricks forming the perimeter of the lower step. A quick sanity check to make sure everything's level and all looks good. For the inside of the base, I filled it with whatever fit, and then filled the gaps with tiny stone mix salvaged from the old step. For the capstones, the miter saw wouldn't cut far enough, so I got a new blade and switched to the circular saw. To avoid having alignment between the caps and the base, I set up the first cap to split the step in half. I used a chalk line from the center of the door to get angles that would point to the middle of the step. That, and aligning with freshly cut neighbor caps, assured the geometry would fit together pleasingly. After those were laid out, I cleaned up the inside edge. The next morning was glue time. Wash off any dust from the bricks that might interfere with the adhesive, and be sure to use the landscaping glue made for stonework. Have fun making absolutely sure that things are mashed together nicely. You get the idea. This is what it looks like when it's done. I knew more of the bottom step would be visible, even after the top step was added, so I decided to use the biggest scrap pieces I had for a spoked wheel design. Getting low on good stone, it was time to cut the top step to give me an exact count of what stone could be considered spare. I worked out a design I liked that also optimally used the capstone I had left. Paper guides were invaluable for helping me make consistent cuts. Before long, I had enough of the top step done to have a handle on my inventory. With what I had left, it was just a matter of puzzling it together in a way that looked good in areas that were going to be visible. Again, paper guides were invaluable, especially when cutting angles for odd shapes. Alright, so that's all the pieces that are going to be showing on the lower step. So everything else that's back here, that's just going to be filler. I'm just going to put in whatever fits and fill it in with sand. Carefully work the polymer sand into all the cracks. Put pressure on it to open up any air pockets and fill in with more sand. Clean off as much of the sand as you can without digging into the cracks, and when done, spray lightly with water until the sand is thoroughly saturated. Next, we lay out the bricks we prepped earlier for the base of the top step, and use landscaping adhesive to secure them in place. Fill with scrap bricks and more leftover tiny rocks. Dirt stuff. Once the base is done, we lay out our capstones we already cut, and then do some maneuvering to get the best fit and look. The last piece to cut is the center of our half circle. Almost done, we lay out the final coating of sand. Massage it into the cracks, just like before. For cleaning up the sand, I wanted to do a better job than I did on the first step. Internet recommended a leaf blower, but all I had was a blow dryer. I had my best success using a soft bristled paintbrush. More water to get the sand to set. And we're done. can't tell, I'm really happy with how they came out. And that is all we have for you today on The Slowest House Tour. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about what I did, then ask them in the comments below. Uh, you can also use that as a great way to leave tips for any other people that might be doing a similar project and watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because there is definitely more content to come on the Slowest House Tour. I hope you have a fantastic day.